Greetings, everyone. DFG here, Gideon Flight. Hey, guys, hope you all had a great day, great afternoon, great night, depending on when you're listening to this video. Uh, but I'm going to take some time. I'm going to go to the book tonight. I know some of you guys enjoy it. And so for you, um, I have a special treat uh, for you. Uh, throughout today, just so that, you know, just so that, you know, to keep you informed, you know, it's been on me all day to um, to discuss the word, to share the word. But as all of us who are seeking to hear from, you know, Elohim, Yahuwah, we don't always know what it is he's trying to tell us. And, uh, you know, as in, uh, and, and I'll give you an example, uh, the prophet Samuel over in 1 Samuel, I think it's around chapter 3, uh, Yahuwah is calling Samuel. And it's because, and Samuel is not responding to Yahuwah, he's responding to Eli, who was the prophet that Samuel was an indigent servant to. And three times uh, Samuel went to Eli saying, what do you want? What do you want? The third time Eli said, look, the next time you hear someone say Samuel, just say, here I am, Lord. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm here to serve you, Lord. And at that point, when Samuel heard the fourth calling of Yahuwah, he said, here I am to serve you, you know, Elohim. And then Elohim gave him instruction and gave him information. And I share that with you because, you know, that it happens to me and I'm sure it happens to many of you. When we can stop and say, here I am, Elohim, I hear you. Tell me what you're trying to tell me. You know, those moments where, you, where you've got this, this anxiety going on inside of you and you're seeking prayer and you're wanting answers, but you can't seem to hear. Sometimes it's just stopping and being quiet and just saying, here I am, Elohim. I'm listening. And then, you know, you will hear according to scripture, according to the book, okay? So, but what I heard today, let's get to the story. I didn't forget. Uh, I didn't get off track, even though I can't digress. You all know that. But I'm going to start with Mark chapter 5, verse 9. This is the gospel of Mark. And it's one verse. And it says, um, when Yeshua asked this man who was possessed and out of his mind, really just going crazy. Um, and you probably see people like this out in the streets, homeless people who are talking to themselves and, you know, they're just, you know, they're, they're unkept. They just, they, you can just tell that something else is going on inside of that person's body, that, they're, that, that their mind is no longer in their control. Something else is controlling their mind. Well, this man was very similar to what you see you know, on many streets throughout, you know, America. And if you live in urban cities like New Orleans, for example, you see them all the time. You go up down Claiborne Avenue, you know, you go down on the river walk near Canal, right by the little area where you sit next to the river. You'll see these, you know, these men and women all the time talking to themselves, sleeping on the ground, you know, uh, trash, laying on trash, tr trash covering them, uh, etc. Okay, so that's that's way more information, I guess, than you needed on this. But when he asked, so when, when Yeshua asked, who are you? He was not speaking to the man, but to the demons which possessed the man. And through, and through the man, they replied, I am legion, meaning many, for we are many. So when a demonic presence identifies itself as being, being named legion, this alludes to the Roman military term. And I bring that up to you because I'm going to read something to you in Psalms chapter 31. And I want you to remember when we get to some numbers. And oh, for the record, you know, what is a legion? And here's the definition of a legion, okay? At its largest, there might have been around a half million soldiers in the Roman army. To keep such a large number of men in order, it was divided up into groups called legions, okay? Legion as was in this one man. Each legion had between 4,000 and 6,000 soldiers, okay? So when that man said, my name is Legion, for there are many, he had anywhere from 6,000 to probably 12,000 demons possessing him. One person, if you can believe that. But it is possible, and in many cases, that's an absolute truth. Therefore, you know, we perceive the people to be insane or out of their minds or you know, using some of the other terms, you know what I'm talking about, lunatics, crazy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And sometimes it's not that, it's demon possession. I would tell you that many, many times when you see them being just reckless and out of control, 
it's typically demon possession. Okay, so let's get into to the meat of this. Okay, going to the book. Now I'm gonna be reading to you tonight, today morning, afternoon, depending on when you're watching this video, from um, Psalm again, chapter 91. And now let me let me go on. He said, "He that dwells in the secret place of Elohim shall abide under the shadow of El Shaddai." Now he's talking about he means me, meaning you. He said, "Those of us who dwell in the secret places." Now what is the secret place? And the scripture says when you want to pray, you enter into your into the closet and you pray in secret. So the secret place is where you and Elohim, you and Yahuwah, spend time together, time which we would call prayer. But that secret place doesn't have to be at an altar. It doesn't have to be in a building. It could be anywhere. It could be in your car. It could be in the restroom. It could be, you know, sitting on a bench waiting for the bus. It could be sitting in a doctor's office waiting to get a get get you know get a word back on some you know, on, on an issue that you might be having. Anywhere it's a secret place when it's just you and your whore in interaction or in commune with one another, okay? So he says that he that dwells in the secret place of Elohim shall abide under the shadow of El Shaddai. He says, I will say unto you whore, he is my refuge and he is my fortress, my Elohim. In him will I trust, okay? And this is what we should be saying. This is David saying this. And David just reminded us what our relationship should be with our creator. Just as, remember, David is our great, 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 great grandfather. He's one of our ancestors, okay? And he's a guy, he's an elder. He's passing on his knowledge to us as I'm passing this knowledge on. And hopefully you'll take the same knowledge and pass it on to, you know, children and those who are of the body of Israel, Okay. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings shall you trust. His trust shall be your shield and buckler, okay? You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that fly by day, nor the pestilence. Now, when you look at the word pestilence, I want to look that up. So he said you should not, you know, he said you should, nor should, 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 you, should you be afraid of the pestilence, right? that walks in the night. Now, here's what it says about a pestilence. A pestilence is a deadly and overwhelming disease that affects an entire community, like the Black Plague, a disease that killed over 30% of Europeans' population. Okay, then it goes on. A pestilence um, a pestilence is a, in any infectious fatal disease that is widespread or evil or an evil influence or deliverer. And some of you might say, well, what is an evil deliverer, DFG? What well, evil deliverer is called temptation. It's when you're being tempted to do something that you shouldn't be doing, but you can't resist. Sometimes like lust. All right? Lust is 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 is, is a is a evil deliverer. Okay, it's it's a temptation that, that can overwhelm you if you don't know how to resist it or fight it off. Or if you don't have the word, more importantly, to battle back against that emotion, those thoughts, suggestions, and ideas that can come to one's mind when you're under attack. And right here saying, so nor the, so he goes again, you shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrows that fly by day, nor the pestilence that walks in the darkness, you know, so you can be attacked with disease and death and sleep, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. He says, a thousand shall fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand. Now that's back to the legion. So you ask, well, what do you mean by a thousand or 10,000? He's talking about demons. He's saying that if you're in the word and you are walking in the knowledge of who you are in the most high and you're, you know, you're, you're, you, you are studying the word. You follow me? You're spending time, you know, uh, under the wings or the shelter of the most high. Then whenever those demons try to enter your body, they cannot. That's why he said a thousand. And again, let me read it to you again. He said a thousand shall fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand but it shall not come near you. In other words, they cannot enter you because you're sealed with the rule of dish if you are obeying the commandments of the Most High. And most importantly, really, if you have accepted the Most High, you know, as your Savior, as your guide, you know what I'm saying, as your protector, again, as your creator. All right? He says, only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. So he's telling you, don't get caught up in what you see, all that wickedness that's going on out there. You're going to see the end of that, what's going to happen to them. Remember that movie, Boys in the Hood, if you guys remember that a long time ago. 
Remember Trey Father was telling him about uh, Doughboy and his brother, and he was talking about how they didn't have a father in their home and how they were bad. And he said, you know what? He said, you're going to see. He said, you might not like me being on you right now, Trey. He said, but down the road, you're going to see what's going to happen to them. And if you remember the movie, you know, if you remember, Doughboy, you know, ended up losing his life at the end of the movie. But Trey, because he had a father who was guiding him and challenging him and holding him accountable, was able to move on with his life and go on to college. If you saw the movie, you know the rest of the story. Okay? He said, because you have made Yahuwah your refuge, even Elohim your habitation, there shall no evil befall you, neither any plague come near your dwellings. For he shall give his angels charge over you. Okay? And he said, the angels are going to watch you. Michael, Gabriel, Raphael. Okay? You know, they're going to be watching over you at all times to ensure nothing happens to you. And anybody that's in your dwelling, I might add. Anybody that's under your covering. In other words, if they report to you, they're responsible to you, they're accountable to you, they honor you, they respect you, they're going to have the same blessings under your covering as long as they stay under your covering. In other words, they stay in that, you know, humble, you know, um, honorable state. For he shall give his angels charge over you to guard you in all your ways, okay? And that means so wherever you go, those angels are going to be with you guys and ladies and, you know, or men, women, brothers and sisters. Those angels are going to be with you. You don't have to be afraid. If you, whether you go in the workplace or wherever you are, they're going to open your eyes. They're going to show you. They're going to give you the wisdom, the perception, the instinct that you need to be aware, to be alone, and know, oh, no, that, that, I'm not going there. It's not for me. I don't, I don't have no, no, no dog in that race. I'm not hanging out over there with them. I'm not being over there. Not that I have anything. I don't have a problem with them. I have a problem with those spirits that are around them that Yahuwah has made it clear to me that I do not walk amongst that group. Fair enough. For he shall give his angels charge over you in all of your ways. Okay? He says, and they shall bear you up in their hands, lest you dash your feet upon the stone. So then we read the last time, you fall down, they're going to grab you. They're going to lift you up. Yahoo said, I'm never going to forsake you. I'm never going to leave you. That's what Yeshua promised us. Okay? He said, you shall tread upon the lion and the adler. The young lion and the dragon shall trample, you shall trample under your feet. When you talk about the dragon, it's talking about Satan. So you're going to have Satan under your feet. I mean, he's going to come. Because think about it. If it's under your feet, it's pretty damn close. But he said he's never going to be able to overcome you or overtake you if you dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Remember verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of Elohim shall abide under the shadow of El Shaddai. Okay? Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I, he will deliver me. I will set him on high, he says, because he has known my name. And that's why you hear me a lot of times telling you guys about, you know, his name is Yahuwah. His name is Yeshua. You follow me? And a lot of people, well, it doesn't mean it doesn't, it doesn't, well, okay. <laughs> I'm not going to dispute you. I'm just telling you, he said, those that know my name. So if my name is Charles and you call me Tommy, you don't know my name. So if you're calling him Jesus and his name is Yeshua, you don't know his name. You let somebody else tell you it means the same. That don't mean if somebody else tell you my name is Johnny, my name is Charles, then you can call me, you know, Johnny all you want, just because they told you that. But that's what they said your name. It doesn't matter what they told you my name. Well, what matters is what my name truly is. If you want to respond from, you know, if you want a response from me, and definitely if you expect me to acknowledge you and to be, you know, and to befriend you, surely you can't expect, expect that from me if you're talking with me as a stranger. You don't even know my name. And he says, and I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. Him is him or her, by the way. And I will deliver him or her and honor him or her. With long life will I satisfy him or her, <laughs> okay, and shall show them my salvation. Or I will show them Yahuwah, who is our salvation. Okay? <laughs> I know that was a lot to digest, but you, but you can handle it. I know you can. But most important, reflect on it, meditate on it. You know, this is our history book. This is the word, guys. You know, the scripture teaches us that as long as, again, as the scripture says, if we stay within the word, him that dwelleth in the secret place of Elohim shall abide under the shadow of El Shaddai. So that's where I'm going to be. And I hope to see you there, too. Love you guys. Talk to you later. BFG.